G'day RPG Makers, welcome back to the RPG Maker MV Tutorial Series Level 2. Today we're going to walk through making a dungeon, and hopefully making a little bit interesting for your players. Let's make a game! So here we are back in RPG Maker MV, we've loaded up our project and we've got our stone cave. And you can see that we've applied some of the skills from level 1 um, back to this cave. So we've put in some doors, we've got some chests, we've got some uh, enemies floating around, and um, we've got these kind of mini puzzles with the uh, uh, boulders there. Now what if we wanted to add another level to our stone cave dungeon? Well, we can see that we've got like a nice little exit here, we've just uh, used some of our mapping tools, so applied um, this lovely kind of cave eg entrance exit and uh, we can set that up as um, a second level so let's do that so the first thing we want to do is we want to right click on our stone cave and we want to click new so we're going to create a new level that's going to be map 25 and we'll call it uh, stone cave level 2 Okay, you can call, you can add the display name as whatever you'd like on any of your dungeons, but maybe we'll put um, stone dungeon dungeon level two. Okay, now this is tile set is going to be a dungeon. Well, I'll make it nice and large for this one. And we'll call it 60 by 60. We won't do any um, scrolling for now, and uh, the encounter steps we're actually going to leave it at 30 because we, we might make a random encounter on this level and if we do it is a dungeon so we might want to make it a little bit grindy I want to keep our uh, background music at dungeon 1 and uh, if you want to you could add a, a background sound for example you might add in a, a darkness kind of sound give it a little bit more of a scary feel Okay. One thing to note with uh, background sounds is that if you do enable them on a level, you want to make sure that you fade out that background sound when you leave the level, uh, otherwise it will continue playing in the background um, underneath the background music. So these uh, play separately, but uh, unless you stop it, it just keeps going. Now with the battle back, we'll just set that in a minute. So let's just click OK for now. And um, here you can see, we'll just scroll out, we'll zoom out. Uh, or we'll use the middle mouse wheel with control to scroll out and we can see that there's our nice lovely big blank map. So let's just go back in here and we'll just quickly click on uh, press space on the stone cave and we can see that our battle back is rock cave and rock cave. So we might just keep that one and we'll go back to the stone cave level 2, press space, specify the battle back and then we're looking for R uh, for rock cave and R uh, for rock cave. Now you could uh, add something else um, if you wanted to give it a little bit of a, a different feel to the other one but we'll just keep it at the same for now. Um, you might want to disable dashing in your dungeons if you want to keep the um, player sort of stuck there and um, and then we won't add a parallax background uh, for the moment. Right now we'll leave the encounters blank but we'll come back to that in a bit. So you've got a blank slate. Um, you could start doing things like uh, filling in floors, for example, and um, adding in, so you could you know, go here and say, okay, well, let's go to map mode, F5, and fill in a floor, and then we could start adding walls um, and, and, and doing all kinds of stuff here. Um, but that's going to get quite tricky very quickly. So you can have to do all this and then blah, blah. Okay, there's another way that's much faster to just get you started on a quick dungeon. And that is the inbuilt dungeon generator. So right click on your new level and click generate dungeon. We'll start with rooms and we'll choose something that looks um, rocky and um, something kind of rocky just for now. Click OK. And there you have it. Just zoom out a bit so we can see the whole thing. So now we can see that uh, the dungeon generator has created a lovely little passageway with some rooms um, that your players can fl flow through nicely. It's also filled in the blank space with um, black so that uh, it's easy to see when you're in the editor. Um, and uh, that the same effect, you'd actually, if it was transparent or whether it's just got these black tiles, you'll have the same effect um, from the player's perspective. Let's just go through the options of that dungeon generator. You can generate uh, another one. So you can just click here again, right click dungeon generator. Now let's just um, see what happens if you do it as a maze. Okay, so you can see it's created this 
maze here that's taken up the whole level. Um, this would probably be an absolute nightmare for anyone who uh, was playing it, um, unless they're an absolute sucker for punishment. So this kind of maze is probably not the kind of thing that you want to do. Okay, we'll right click again, generate dungeon. Let's just see what happens if we add margins. Okay, okay, we can see that what it's done is it's added margins around the edge of the map. So that what happens is if the player is inside the map, so we'll just do it, we'll just go to F6 and go set starting position for the player. And we'll press play. Okay, we can see that there's um, more margin around the edge of the map. Okay, now you can see what happens in this map if you are the player. From the player's perspective, this is going to become a bit of a nightmare. So unless you are specifically looking to create this kind of a game, uh, it's probably not the most, not the best way to do it. Alright, so let's try some more options. So we could generate dungeon, and we can go to wide passages. Uh, that makes it a bit more acceptable. So let's say you do want to create a maze type um, environment, then if you did something like this, the player, you know, you could start the player, say, down here, and then they could uh, probably get down this way a little bit easier. So let's say we put the player there, and just press play. Okay, and you can see that it would be a lot easier to get around this dungeon. We had their stone dungeon level 2. Okay. Alright, now let's see if we wanted to um, just change it back to the rooms and margins and wide passages. And then we have a lovely big rooms, nice big uh, passages and, uh, and some extra space around the outside. So what do we do with these? So the first thing to do is to just repeat that process until you get um, some kind of a dungeon that you are quite happy with. So uh, what you can do is you can as you can see from the shortcut there, you can actually do Control D. So just do Control D. Um, you got to be in um, clicking. You got to click on the map and then do Control D. Click OK. Control D. Click OK. Control D. Click OK until you get something that you're happy with. So we'll just um, tinker with these settings and uh, we'll see if we can find something that we're happy with. Okay. So using the settings of rooms and wide passages, but without margins. Uh, we have come up with this, so which gives us a nice little um, lift loop here uh, and finishes in a sort of slightly larger room, so we could do something there. Now as you can see this dungeon uh, compared to our stone cave here is very boring. So how do we make it a bit more interesting and how do we make it connect to our cave? So the very first thing we want to do is to create a pathway. So that's super easy, just hit F5 to go into map mode. We'll press, we'll right click um, to grab a floor so copy the floor tile, then we'll right click to copy the ceiling tile, and there we have an entrance. And we'll just quickly pop back into event mode with F6, and um, we'll click here, and we'll say, okay, let's uh, quick, quick event creation, transfer, and we'll transfer back to Stone Cave. Now this is going to exit here. Okay, okay. And on the Stone Cave side, uh, we'd actually have an issue here because that would block us if we do that. So we'll just have to move this boulder back a little bit. Um, and on the Stone Cave side, what we want to do is from here, we want to have a quick event creation that will transfer through to our Stone Cave level 2 and we'll come out here. Perfect. So let's just really quickly test the effect of that now. Now we'll start off here. I've got a little puzzle, so we'll move that out of the way. We go in here, and here we are inside our brand new dungeon, and we can walk around our brand new dungeon. Perfect, but it's really boring as we said. So how do we liven up our dungeon? The easiest way is just to copy things from our stone cave example. So we've just gone back to F5 on the map, and we'll just say, okay, well let's go back here, and we'll put things like uh, a spider web. Okay, uh, maybe we can put some of these um, Tights up, mites down, I, I forget which one it is. Stites, stalactites, stalagmites. Uh, you figure out. We can just pop a few of those around here, around there, around there, for example. Okay, a couple over here, a couple over here, a couple over here. That's a bit of a, that's a bit of a start. All right, well, we can take a few more things. Um, so we've got uh, this one, for example. We'll just grab that and we'll just pop that around in the different places. Over here and over there, and a bit over there. Oops, uh, a bit over there and there and there. And there. Okay, we'll just do that for a little bit um, to get a, a bit of a different feel for things. OK, 
Okay, and the next thing we can do is we just grab a bit of this sort of darker uh, material. Just put a bit of that around there, a bit over there, a bit over there. Uh, you just might want to put some splotches rather than make it all solid. Just little bits like that, um, etc. Okay. So we're starting to look a little bit more organic, but uh, we still have a problem. These rooms are obviously very square, so how do we fix that? Well, the easy way to fix square uh, blocks on your map is to simply use the round tool. So we click on this tool here, and then what we can do is we can just um, grab, right click on the, the floor, and we can actually just um, grab, so you sort of extend it out like this, and it'll make a little kind of a circle. Okay, now obviously you want to do this before you start doing your um, decoration, because as you can see, it's actually messed up our uh, our initial decoration. So we can just make the just just make some of these edges a bit more organic. Just twinkle with that over here. Maybe just set this over here to be a bit more organic over there. And we'll go through and do that across this map. If I want to cut uh, back into the the corner here, for example, I can just copy the the blackness there and just cut this across like that, and that across like that. So I can just make it smaller instead of bigger. Um, same over here, I could cut this this way instead of going that way. And at the end I might want to make this into like a really big kind of cavity kind of thing. And there we go. I'll just make it a bit bigger. Uh, get rid of those nice round corners that we were looking for so it's less organic, uh, so it's less square. Because um, it is still supposed to be a kind of a dungeon, it's not, a, not, not like a tower entrance, so it's not supposed to be man-made. Maybe we want to add an extra room, so I could just like uh, drag over here. So I'm just clicking and dragging, holding and dragging. And what you'll see is that the more you, the sort of further out you drag it, it'll actually turn into almost a, a, a circle there. There we go. I'll just give it like a little bit of a slightly less exact. Perfect. Okay, so I've gone through and I've effectively changed the entire shape of this. I've retained the basic structure, but you can see now I've added a few dead end rooms um, and pretty much all the walls and the uh, edges are gone. So uh, this might be a bit too much customization for what we're after but uh, let's say we want to go ahead with this. How do we um, now re-block this in? Okay so what you're doing is you quickly grab the um, the, the wall ceiling there and um, we're just going to drag around the edges. So um, we're looking for all of the bottom walls here, so I'm just going to drag around here, drag around here. Now this also gives you a different way to actually make this. So here's another way that you could make this. Let's say that you wanted to just block that all off. You can um, right click on the black and let's say this is all black. You could then just grab that, uh, right click there and then just fill that in and then you could um, block that off. So there's different ways that you can just uh, make a, a new room or, or whatever. But we'll just, uh, we'll just continue ahead with this one. So we'll just grab our tool here and so we're just gonna we're just gonna fill in all these blanks with our um, walls wall area here and we'll go around and do that all right so I've just quickly gone around the edges uh, that's taken me about three minutes if that um, now what we're doing is we're looking for areas where you can see that that should be a wall so I can see here um, that's the top and so I'm just going to put in wall sections wherever basically we find a top so Try to keep it, you don't want it to be too even, um, and um, uh, then it gets a little bit tricky when you get to the edges there, but so you don't want it to be too even, and uh, you just want to make sure that if your wall section sticks up into the, the black area that you give it a roof, okay, or a ceiling a ceiling section. So the easiest way to do that is to um, right click here and drag, so I've got the ceiling and two walls, and so when I add a section, you can see that it's also adding the ceiling so even if I go into the black bit into the black area there I'm actually getting a ceiling as well and so I can just kind of adjust this a little bit as I go I'll just maybe just bring that around there and then I can just fill in the blanks and get rid of those extra ceilings here so I'll go through and I'll just make sure that all my corners are connected um, and I'll go through and do the rest of that okay so here we are back in our dungeon um, we've completed all the walls and then what we've done is we've gone through and added a bunch of clutter um, and we've added some rooms 
that you can only access through some secret traps, and we'll go through those in the next episode, how to uh, apply those secret entrances and passageways, and uh, we've got some doors that require levers. Um, but uh, this is the basic look, and so all we've done after laying out the walls and the ceilings is to go through and use the same uh, kinds of principles as you can see on the stone cave there. So you can see the different things against the wall. So you start off with the walls, um, and you know there's some nice stuff here. So you can just find some vines, for example. Use F5 and just uh, apply the vines there. You can go through and add some leaves. You can add these kind of vines. You've got cracks in the walls. Um, you've got things like um, uh, then you can you know you can apply things like mushrooms. So uh, mushrooms can go on the ground or they can go on the wall. They look alright. Um, and uh, you've got other things that don't necessarily have to go with the stone cave. So this, if you have a look down here in the bottom left corner, you can see this is theoretically a demonic world, but it looks pretty nice in a, in a stone cave. Um, and same with these kind of things, uh, just for a little bit of extra flavour. You've got things like clutter around here, so you can find on your tile set B, you've got you know barrels, broken barrels, broken jars, etc. They all make it uh, all look quite interesting um, and then y you can go back and do things like putting in treasure chests and, and things like that just like we looked at in level one so let's have a look at the net effect uh, just before we do that we're just going to quickly uh, go back here so if you recall from the introduction part uh, we actually looked at setting it up and we we had um, there's an auto player background sound of darkness okay and uh, we've got disabled dashing on here so let's just check out the effects of those so with the background sound, we want to um, set up a new event command line uh, on page two, fade out background sound, say one second, and what that does is that will actually uh, apply, uh, that will remove the background sound when you come out, uh, when you leave this. So um, if I had an exit on the other side, I also want to fade out the background sound over there. Um, and the other part on the setup of the map level was just setting some encounters. So uh, once again, if you recall, um, you can set up a snake encounter here. Uh, that's fantastic. Um, if we tried to do it like this, w which is what we did in level one, we'd try to use an image, but there's no snake image. Okay, so it's not an evil or monster. Okay, so what would happen is uh, we can't really set that up. So we're just using random encounters. Hit the map, press space. Uh, double click here to choose a random encounter and there you can bring up the kind of encounters that you would like to see uh, and that gives you the option to choose you know spiders and snakes etc that are not uh, in your sprite list yet but we'll look at how to get those sprites in the next level so here we are back in our regular stone cave uh, we imagine that we've gone through the cave and we've come to here and now we're going to enter our new dungeon um, and here we are and there's a random encounter um, and we'd have to fight those. Uh, just for testing purposes, I have created a common event and it's called cheat mode. So um, if button page up is pressed down, I tick uh, on the conditional branch, if and then on page four there's button and if page up is pressed down. Okay, now this is um, ask you to do a channel on cheat mode, yes, and then control switch cheat mode on. And on each dungeon level, I've added a cheat mode, but uh, cheat mode event in the corner. It's running in parallel, and it's just calling common event cheat mode. So if I hit play, I can press page up and turn on cheat mode, and then that way, when I enter the dungeon, I we'll run around, and, and it will actually, uh, I can just automatically win. Um, so if I go and fight my bats, cheat mode will activate. And that's really handy for doing debugging. So our final little walkthrough, um, there we go, we come into our cave, we walk through our dungeon, we can see our lovely area here, um, we've set up some, uh, pick up some things which are kind of like little quests, uh, that might be a bit over the top, and we've got some fights, and cheat mode wasn't on, so therefore uh, I have to, I'd have to play through that. Um, but you can see that, uh, yeah, a little bit of work. The dungeon looks pretty good, and uh, we'll go through next time uh, how to add things like secret passages and uh, levers for your doors um, and some uh, mimic chest traps. That's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, 
please consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons as they do help with the algorithm. Now it's your turn to go make a game. See you in the next one.